What's up guys, welcome back to Deck Tech for Decks. I'm your host Caleb. If you want to support me, you can now support me on Patreon. If you want to put some say into the deck list, I do, while also getting some help on your current builds, that's going to be a solid option. You can also use that TCG player link in the description down below to support me, and as always, just liking, commenting, subscribing will do the trick. Now, let's get into today's deck tech with Corvold. And guys, I messed up. This deck is way too powerful for the casual play groups I play with. Honestly, this deck was winning around turn 4, 5, and six at the latest and then I really like to do crazy stuff like you know win around seven start doing crazy stuff around turn six maybe but not be able to close out the game and then interacted with you can even go as long as turn nine and ten I like long games of magic to do fun Timmy things right this is not what this deck did this deck did very fast things and it broke Corvold and you know Corvold's already broken anyway but what does the deck do and how does it work let's get into that if you guys don't know, I built this deck around the premise maybe we could turn Corvold into Narset. If you don't know what Narset is, all you need to know is that whenever she attacks, you basically win the game because you take infinite turns. So, Corvold, I was like, couldn't we do the same thing, but just with combat steps? All we want to do is get either the Reaver Cleaver or Old Nawbone on the battlefield, and then when Corvold deals combat damage, we're going to generate treasure tokens equal to his power, right? So then we sacrifice those treasure tokens, buffing his power up more, and draw us into extra combat spells. Then we play the extra combat spells, get extra combat steps, and generate even more treasure tokens. Pretty soon, Corvold will be over 21 power. Honestly, he gets to 40 power pretty fast. And then you just knock everybody in the head for commander damage. All you need is three combat steps to really get this deck going. And like I said, it can happen as soon as turn four. I have play tested, and it can win turn three, but that's like magical christmas land so if uh you know you want to make your friends hate you and you want a deck that's not cedh but it's not casual somewhere in between this is the deck for you so let's get into it let's kick it off by talking about how we are going to win the turn we attack with corvold all we'll need is old nabone on the battlefield or the reaver cleaver attached to corvold it's simple all we have to do is smash face with corvold he will be six power at this point and then you will generate six treasure tokens then you can sacrifice six treasure tokens to draw six cards and add six mana to your mana pool what you really want to see on the top of the library after these draws is something like seize the day so we can go ahead and take another combat step draw even more cards 12 to be ex or 13 to be exact and then from there you will definitely win the game but that doesn't always go to plan so ensure that we really get that extra combat step going and dig deep enough to get the card that we need we run a lot of effects like seize the spoils these cards are especially good in Corvold because not only are they drawing you cards they're giving you more treasure tokens which again will draw you more cards ensuring that we will definitely get to that next combat step and generate even more treasure tokens again winning the game we also run goto which might be a head scratcher at first but honestly it's amazing when you pair it with saw in half if we saw in half Godo, not only can we search up Hammer of Nazan, we can also search up the Reaver Cleaver and attach both of those straight to Korvold. So now Korvold has protection and the Reaver Cleaver attached, ready to take infinite combat steps, or enough to kill our opponents. Hordling Broodlord is just a better version of this. Not only can it tutor up our saw in half, but then we can get Entomb and reanimate and then tap those Hordling tokens to cast them for free, getting Old Nawbone to the graveyard and then on the battlefield. Pretty busted. The main reason this deck is so devastating is because we are really efficient at getting those bombs to our graveyard and reanimating them super early. Victimize, reanimate, exhume, all of these cards can be played really early, especially with the fodder that we are running. Agadim's Awakening is more of a late game card, by late game I mean like turn 5, and it will result in a win, especially when we reanimate some of those bombs. Animate Dead, super efficient. Dance of the Dead, again, just super efficient. This one's super wordy, but all you need to know is it's basically just going to reanimate a card from your graveyard, and it will be tapped. Ruthless Technomancer is in the deck because sometimes you just need more gas, and Ruthless Technomancer, put simply, is gas. We can use this to sacrifice one of our giant creatures to create a ton of treasure tokens. I've even used it to sacrifice Corvold, reanimate Corvold, and then, you know, repeat the process of sacrificing treasure tokens, drawing a lot of cards, equipping something like Swiftfoot Boots to Corvold, that way he has haste, and then win the game from here. He's also pretty nutty with Dockside Extortionist, assuming you have enough artifacts on your opponent's side of the battlefield to make that worth it. Now, in order to reanimate all of those early bombs, we need to discard them. Stuff like Faithless Looting and Thrill of Possibilities can be really early discard outlets to ensure that we can get those big bombs into the graveyard. If you draw into a Faithless Looting and an Old Nawbone, you've just hit the jackpot. Seize the Spoils, Unexpected Windfall, and Big Score 
have two roles in this deck. One, discarding those bombs so we can reanimate them later. Not to mention in this deck, they read completely different. Like take Seize the Spoils, for instance. We're gonna draw off two cards and create a treasure token, but that's really gonna draw us three cards because Corvold will be on the battlefield and we'll sacrifice that treasure token, which will draw us an additional card. Same for Unexpected Windfall and Big Score. These will draw us four cards because we get two from the card and then two from the treasure tokens. It's extremely busted. Fable of the Mirror Breaker is also incredibly useful in this deck. Coming down as soon as turn two, this can create us fodder, it can create treasure tokens, it'll let us discard the, some of those cards that we need to get into our graveyard, and nine times out of ten, the flip side's not relevant because we will have already won by then. Wheel of Misfortune, super amazing card in this deck. It allows you to discard your hand and draw into seven cards, so not only will you discard those bombs, you'll get a fresh new grip, which is incredibly useful in these decks with very low average CMC cost. Dark this card has an incredibly high ceiling in the deck, right? Because you can end up with 20 to 18 cards in your hand just because of how much cards we've drawn off of Corvold sacrificing all those treasure tokens. So while this normally says, hey, discard six cards and draw five, this is going to say something like discard 18 and draw 17 in this deck. Buried Alive and Entomb are just super solid cards for getting Old Nawbone into the graveyard. With Buried Alive, I usually grab Hordling Broodlord and Razaketh additionally just because they're tutors on a body. That way, whenever we do draw into those extra six cards on that combat, if we run into a reanimation spell, we can just reanimate one of them and easily tutor up that extra combat spell that we need to end out the game. Another thing a Corval deck wants is something to sacrifice, some fodder, right? Something when he enters the battlefield that you can get rid of and you're not going to cry about. It. Ragavan is going to be amazing at this. He's going to smash face, get you some additional card advantage off of your opponent's deck while generating some treasure tokens. Impulsive Pilferer is amazing at this. He just comes down turn one, he dies, and creates a treasure token, giving you access to more mana. He also has that amazing Encore ability, but I'm going to be honest, I have never used it. I've never needed it. Bitter Blossom is also amazing. Comes down turn two, gets you some blockers, gets you some fodder, everything you need. Orcish Bowmasters. This card's just messed up, especially when you pair it with the two wheels we have in the deck. It just creates a massive orc and deals a lot of damage, but honestly, this card's just backbreaking. You don't want to play your mana dorks into it or your impactful utility creatures, and you don't really want to draw cards so they can kill your creatures you've already played. Bloodgast is an all-star. Super simple. When a land enters the battlefield, you can just bring them from your graveyard back onto the battlefield. Black Market Connections is another amazing card to see in your opener because we will utilize every single part of this card. We want the treasure tokens, we want the body to sacrifice, and we want the additional card draw. Dockside Extortionist, this guy's just broken, comes down early, creates those treasure tokens, and you can sacrifice him without missing him. Let's get into the extra combat spells we run, because that's a very key part of the deck. We only have five, but hey, they're enough to do the trick. Seize the Day is one of the best, because it will give you two additional combat steps on Corvold, which is basically the only creature we're going to be attacking with. Relentless Assault is super solid. Fury of the Horde is awesome because when you draw into all of those cards, it's going to be pretty simple to discard two red cards for a free extra combat step. Aggravated Assault goes infinite with Old Nawbone or the Reaver Cleaver on Coravold because you can easily pay that five mana. Savaged Beating is a little, you know... You gotta jump through some hoops because you do only have the ability to play this as an instant when you are attacking. So if you draw into this one, it won't help you out much, but it will end somebody when you do have the ability to cast it. Let's move on to the miscellaneous stuff. We have Sylvan Library. This is amazing in your opener as well. Just drawing a ton of cards is always amazing. Jessica's Will. This one adds a lot of mana to your mana pool while giving you some card advantage. Salvala Heart of the Wilds. I like playing this one because honestly, sometimes we just need more mana. So throwing her onto the battlefield getting to add mana of any combination of color storm mana pool equal to Corvold's power can be extremely helpful and broken. Noxious Revival brings back those reanimation spells so we can reanimate more broken stuff or whatever we need back from the graveyard, right? Rhythm of the Wilds will ensure that we have haste and make sure Corvold does not get countered. Sylvan Safekeeper, another card that can easily protect Corvold while drawing us into additional cards if we need it. The One Ring, not only is this our oh shit button, I didn't make it, we need to slam this and pass, it will also draw us into some answers. And Gamble, Vampiric Tutor, and Raziketh the Foulblooded. Just incredibly impactful tutors. And I'm going to be honest, 
Razaketh is not that hard to cast in this deck just because of the sheer mana we are creating whenever we're attacking with Korvold. And then we are running Swiftfoot Boots for some added protection. We can't really run Lightning Greaves. We could, but I mean, we will have to unequip it to equip the Reaver Cleaver. And there's some annoying stuff like Seize the Day that we need to target Korvold. So it's just better not to have it in the deck. Moving on to Ramp. Surprise, surprise, it's all coming down turn one. Delighted Halfling can not only protect Korvold, but add mana to our mana pool. Birds of Paradise, you know, it's a staple. We also also have Elves of Deep Shadow, Elvish Mystic, and Fendhorn Elves, as well as Leonwar Elves, Ignoble Hierarch, and that Soul Ring. Notably, the buffing effect on Ignoble is pretty useful because that will just generate an extra token when you attack with Korvold and the Reaver Cleaver or Old Nawbone. Moving on to interaction, it is kind of heavy in this deck because higher power means higher interaction. Tybalt's Trickery, Bolt Bend, and Deflecting Swat will ensure that our Korvold is safe whenever we cast him. Assassin's Trophy and Terra Sunder. These can get rid of mostly any permanent that is giving us issues. We have Nature's Claim and Crows and Grip. Crows and Grip has saved my life due to that split second ability. You know when a food chain gets dropped, you gotta remove it right then or they can just combo off in response. Deadly Rollick, pretty solid. Tree removal spell, I will take it. Boseju who endures, it's a land, it's removal, it's perfect in the deck. Blasphemous Act, super cheap, we're only ever paying like one red mana for this. Toxic Deluge, again super impactful because we can kind of make it to where Korvold lives every time we cast this. And then we have Chandra's Ignition. I have used this in the past, if someone has a blocker, we can just, you know, cast Chandra's Ignition, kill him with the 40 damage because our Korvold is a 40-40 at this point, and then you just win the game that way. With that being said, that brings us to the end of the video. That's the deck tech, guys. I'm pretty proud of this deck. I mean, I built it on an idea, hey, whenever we attack with Korvold, we win. Turns out pretty simple. And if I'm being honest, I don't even know who deserves the credit. Korvold for being just busted in general, or me for coming up with this crazy idea. But on that note, guys, I'm out of here. As always, I hope this helped you in your deck building endeavors, and as always, I'll see you in the next one.